I've always advocated for everyone having a UPS at their gaming PC or for their network equipment or really anywhere possible because there are a lot of advantages to having a UPS at your you know, gaming station. And one of the main advantages is, well, if there's a power outage, you can continue playing and even stay online, assuming your ISP, of course, still has power, and you don't get disconnected from your session, which is great. And so with me being a big UPS advocate, of course, when Golden Mate hit me up, I was like, yeah, I'd like to check out your UPS, but are you even a real company? Well, I wasn't sure, but a lot of other YouTubers seem to have these units. They're available on Amazon. They have their own website, which you can purchase these things from as well. So I figured I'd give it a shot and check it out. And well, it's here, so I guess they must be real. Golden Mate initially offered to send over their 800 watt unit, but actually sent me a 600 watt unit, which for my household is kind of underpowered, especially for something like my gaming PC. So I do have an idea of how I could use this more permanently, uh, but it won't be for a gaming PC, it'll more likely be for the entertainment center. But before we even talk about or show you all that stuff, let's talk about the 600 watt unit itself and some of the pros and cons and specifications, things of that nature. Let's start with the specs that I think we all care about. It's 600 watts, so you should have an estimated runtime of anywhere between 11 to 15 minutes, depending on how much of a load you put on it. If it's 600 watts, in theory, you'll get a full 15 minutes out of it. It's a lithium iron phosphate battery. So again, it's super lightweight, unlike one of these honkers. This is a lead acid battery. So it's obviously much heavier. It's got a six amp hour battery inside, which is great. And it allegedly has pure sine wave, but that's not something I can test or prove that it does. I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt on that. And it's also very quiet. So right now plugged in with absolutely no load, it makes no sound. If we unplug it, the fan does kick on, but still under no load, you can't hear it except for the beeping, of course. And even while it's under load, it's still pretty quiet. My gaming PC makes so much noise that there'd be no way to show you how loud it is when actually under a significant load like my gaming PC, because my gaming PC is just so loud. And that pretty much covers all of the important facts, I guess, about this unit. Taking a closer look at the unit, on the front here, you can see the single fan that pulls fresh air in from the front and exhausts it out the rear. We have our LCD panel and we have a power button here. If you press and hold this for five seconds, the unit will turn off. And if you press and hold it for another three seconds, the unit will turn back on. On the left here, we have the status indicator light, green for good. And on the right here, we have a status indicator that will turn red if there is in any sort of alert or anything that is generated that you need to know about. And that is about all of the functionality on the front that you have. On the rear of the device, we have eight outlets that you can use. We also have an overload protector switch on the left. And on the right is a little rubber grommet that protects a debugging interface. So this is allegedly for debugging purposes only, and it somehow cannot communicate with the server, but there's no accessories included for us to actually use this. So I guess it's really just for the manufacturer and not us at home. And then we also have our AC input port here on the rear. Let's start off with talking about some of the cons of this UPS. And some of them are very minor and some you'll probably have stronger opinions about than I will, but nonetheless, the first one that I'd like to complain about is the LCD panel. You can only turn the LCD panel on and then it'll go to sleep after some time. I don't know what that time is because I'm too lazy to sit around and watch it and time it to see how soon it turns off. It's something lengthy, probably around five minutes, but I don't know. I wish there was a way to turn it on and keep it on permanently, like an option that was available to us, but that doesn't seem to be the case. And I also wish there was a way to just turn it off when I'm done looking at it. And no matter where you sit in this camp, that is a feature I think they could add in the future or something that I think everyone would appreciate. The next one is a little bit more serious and it has to do with the mute. There's actually no indicator button that lets us know if the system is muted or if it's just, we just don't know, there's no indicator. And also you can only silence it, that not permanently mute the device. You can mute it, but it's more of a silence function as in it's temporary, it's not permanent. If I rip out power right now, the system beeps because that is what we expect it to do and it should beep again. And we can now silence it by pushing the 
um, switch or the power button on the front of the device and you won't hear it beep anymore. And this is what I mean by silence function. So when I plug it back in, you should not hear anything at all. Cool. However, as soon as I unplug the device again, we will actually hear a beep. And that's because it's a temporary silence, not really what I would consider a mute. So that's something to keep in mind if you're looking at this device. Other UPSs do have a permanent mute bu button typically on the device. And when you do have it muted, there's also an indicator letting you know that it is in fact muted. This doesn't have that, and I find that kind of strange. Now, while on the topic of indicators, another problem, I suppose, is that we have no way to know how long this device will take to charge because the LC doesn't tell us. And we also have no way of knowing how long or how much runtime we have left when it's under load and there is no connection. Now, I understand this is supposed to be for home use, but that's something that would still be nice to have especially if you are using it during an extended outage and you plan on charging your phones or it's an emergency situation and you kind of need to know how much runtime is left on this thing. Now it will tell you its battery level, but there's no percentages, they're just bars. So it's also really hard to gauge when it's at zero, how truly at zero or no bars it is. So that was also a really strange thing to leave out and all other UPSs I've ever interacted with give you some sort of runtime information as well as an estimate of how long it takes to charge. Now they say that it only takes about six hours to charge. I haven't sat down and timed it myself, but I think that is in the neighborhood of, of uh, true or realism there. I just left it charge overnight after kind of playing it with myself. My next major complaint is for a product in 2025, it has no USB-C or USB type A or any USB options at all. This UPS on the left is from 2015 and it gives me two USB ports to charge any sort of smart devices or anything that needs USB. And this does not. Now this is more expensive than this unit, but I'm sure they could have figured out how to at least provide that on this unit itself, especially in this day and age. Like who doesn't have a USB device that they need to charge, right? Anyway, so that was also another weird oddity, not a major complaint, but still it would have been nice to have, especially since it's targeted for home users that would have those types of devices. Now it's not all doom and gloom. This unit does have some perks. The first being that the power cable is actually detachable. So that means you can have a shorter cable if you wish or a longer cable if you wish. So that way the device uh, can be further away or closer, whatever it is. That's actually really cool. Also another perk of having a detachable cable is that if you are transporting this thing, you don't have to worry about breaking this. Now most UPSs, these cables are pretty robust, but at the same token, I really wish a lot of them allowed you to use your own cable so you could have different lengths, obviously, and you don't risk damaging the unit during transportation. So that's really cool. And that's all we have for the pros. No, I'm just kidding. There are actually a couple more besides that. One of the other things I appreciate about this unit is that it does actually allow you to run over 600 watts only for a short duration. So I did get my gaming PC out and I was hitting this thing at about 800 some odd watts and it ran for several seconds before finally the protection kicked in and turned the device off. But that's still really cool to see that you can go over 600 watts and it runs perfectly fine. And also when we were testing to see how long the device would actually stay powered on, it was over 600 watts for at least 11 minutes. Uh, obviously it, it kind of varied there during the testing, but still it would go over 600 watts and it lasted about 11 to 12 minutes and it was perfectly fine even drawing more than 600 watts. So that's also really cool to see. It's also really quiet. Now I can't prove to you how quiet it is because if I put any kind of load on it, every device I have is quite loud or louder than this. So for me, there's actually no way to prove to you that it is in fact quiet. Yes, it has fan noise. Yes, you can hear it in a quiet room, especially if it's like charging or under load, but it's not the loudest thing. My gaming computer is way louder in every single way. There's almost no comparison between the two. It's still very quiet. In fact, 
Right now, this is machine is or this UPS is running, and I can hear it over this unit. I don't hear anything from this unit at all, except a little bit of a fan, maybe some coil whine. I don't think that's coil whine. I think that's just the fan. But this one is definitely much louder. Uh, so I'd say if I had to guess, it's probably around 40, less than 40 decibels right now. I, I honestly don't know. I'm just guessing. Now, the other thing I like about this is it's, of course, lithium iron phosphate, which is a huge game changer because it only makes it about, that's probably about 10 pounds if I had to guess. I could weigh it, but I'm a little lazy. I don't feel like going to get my weight versus this lead acid battery. This thing probably weighs like 40 pounds if I had to guess. It's pretty hefty. Uh, so that's really cool that, you know, this is lithium iron phosphate and it's around $140 if you can find it on sale. Whereas this unit, not this particular unit, because this is a thousand watts, so it's probably closer to $200, but comparable CyberPower 600 watt unit is about 160-ish. So, you know, and that's still lead acid. So I think this is probably a better deal because lithium iron batteries uh, tend to last longer. You don't have to change them out as often. And that's kind of nice. Like these batteries last about three years and they cost about $80 to replace, uh, at least where I get my batteries from. So, you know, who knows? We'll, we'll, we're definitely gonna do a long-term test on this thing. If it, anything happens between uh, after this video and sometime in the future, especially with the batteries, I'm gonna make another video about it and let you guys know that, hey, yeah, this thing definitely didn't last 10 years. Uh, so I think that's all the pros that I actually have for this device. I, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head that is worth mentioning as a pro for the Golden Mate 600 watt UPS. At least not right now anyway. I'm sure I'll think of something later, but. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, let's play around with the runtime of this unit a little bit to see kind of where it's at. But first we need to let it charge so it's got a full charge and then we'll play with it. Anyway, come on. I wanted to test and see how long the UPS would last while under near 600 watts worth of load. So I loaded up the Oblivion Remaster and found a corner to stand in while I waited for the UPS to die. The load varied from about 596 watts to 609 watts and the UPS cut power around the 11 minute mark. Strangely, after cutting power, it did turn back on and I was able to use the UPS for about another two and a half minutes before it finally shut down for good. I observed this behavior at least three times, so it must be some sort of built-in protection function going on. Testing how long the battery would operate while overloaded was simple, but the results were inconsistent. Sometimes while playing games, the UPS would kick off the overload protection within a few seconds, and sometimes I could play for a few minutes. Generally keeping it below 800 watts gave me the longest runtime while it was overloaded. The game plan is to put the battery over here, connected to the TV, the soundbar, the switch, and the subwoofer. Before we do that, we actually have to remove the old battery that's already in here. We of course need to remove the existing battery before putting in the new unit. Remember those power cables I mentioned earlier? Well, this cable will fit through the tiny hole while this older style cable takes some finesse. Swapping out the batteries was easy and I can't wait to see how the Golden Mate UPS performs over time while being stored and hidden away like my old UPS was. I'm confident it will be fine stored here and I'm not afraid of it catching fire, but if it does, then I guess I'll have some new YouTube content to make. If you guys have any questions about this UPS, definitely drop some comments below and let me know uh, what they are. And also just let me know what you think about the UPS in general. If anything does happen to the UPS, I'll make a follow-up video letting you know about any major gripes or complaints I have. But honestly, I think that's pretty much it. I can't think of anything else that's really important to show you guys about this UPS. So with all that being said, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Peace.